Joan Blondell was an old Hollywood actress best known for her roles in Golden Age classics like The Public Enemy. That film came relatively early in her career, and she continued working for five decades after. Some might think the actress finding consistent work over the course of her career was a good thing, but she couldn't have quit if she wanted to. Join Facts First as we explore the sad reason Joan Blondell was forced to work until her death. Joan Blondell was born into show business. Joan Blondell was born August 30, 1906. She was born in New York City and her parents were stars on the city's vaudeville circuit. Joan began accompanying her parents on stage at age three. And by the time she came of age, she joined a stock company at 17 and went on to make her debut performing with the Ziegfeld Follies. She then went on to star in a variety of notable Broadway productions before eventually being given the chance to head to Hollywood. This happened after she starred alongside fellow burgeoning star James Cagney on the stage in a Broadway production called Penny Arcade. It was a major success and it was subsequently set to be adapted into a film by Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers Pictures decided both Joan and James should be kept on the project to reprise their roles, which proved a magnificent entrance for both stars into Hollywood. The Hollywood adaptation was renamed Sinner's Holiday and it made modest stars of both leads. Joan and James went on to appear together in a variety of other pictures, including the much more iconic 1931 film The Public Enemy. Another notable picture they appeared together in was Blonde Crazy, released in theaters the same year. Joan Blondell was then paired alongside Dick Powell in several films. The two made a popular pair and appeared in a variety of musicals. In 1936, Joan and Dick got married. Joan had already been married previously, having been married to cinematographer George Barnes from 1933 until just before her wedding to Dick. She was married three times throughout her life, and her divorces ended up costing her dearly. The Two High Points of Joan's Career The two high points of Joan's career were her streaks with James Cagney and Dick Powell. Following these two episodes in her life, she never found the same consistent success, but she did manage to work consistently given the fact that she adapted to take on smaller roles. In the early 50s, Joan had a notable late career success thanks to her turn in the film The Blue Veil. It led to her getting an Academy Award nomination. She also received a great deal of acclaim thanks to her work on the stage in A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. Other notable late career roles included her turns as a main cast member on the series Here Come the Brides during the late 60s, as well as a minor role in the musical film Grease. She got to work with major stars like Betty Davis, Ginger Rogers, William Powell, and John Travolta. Sadly, Joan never ended up winning many awards over the course of her life, though she was nominated for several. She was also nominated for a pair of Golden Globe Awards and a Tony. Her Golden Globe nominations came for her turns in the films The Cincinnati Kid and Opening Night. The Cincinnati Kid saw Joan working with Norman Jewison, and Opening Night saw her working with John Cassavetes. Although Joan was lacking big-name recognition towards the end of her career, it can't be denied she was a respectable character actress who found consistent work. Sadly, Joan never was given the opportunity to retire. Instead, she was forced to work herself to death to pay off debts. Before we tell you more, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Sure Joan's divorces ended up costing her too much. Joan Blondell was married and divorced three times, and these divorces cost the actress a great deal. She had met her first husband, George Barnes, working together on a picture called The Greeks Had a Word for Them. That marriage didn't last very long. They were married for three years. Joan then went on to marry Dick Powell after working with him in a few features. They were married for a little longer, with the marriage lasting from 1936 to 44. She then fell for the charms of a producer named Michael Todd and chose him to be her third husband. Sadly, this was the worst situation of them all. It only lasted a small handful of years, with them marrying in 1947 and divorcing in 1950. Michael was said to be physically abusive to Joan. Following their divorce, he notably went on to marry Elizabeth Taylor. Joan chose never to remarry after her messy divorce from her third husband, and this was perhaps a wise decision. Still, she felt the repercussions of her three divorces for the rest of her life. Joan was struggling financially for decades leading up to her death, and it's arguable that having to work so hard into her twilight years contributed to the actress passing away before her time. She passed away in 1979 at age 73. This came only a year after Grease was released, which contained one of Joan's last big roles. 
Joan was good friends with Judy Garland and Clark Gable. Joan Blondell worked with many notable celebrities throughout her career, and some of the closest relationships she formed were with Betty Davis, Barbara Stanwyck, and Judy Garland. She was perhaps closest of all to Judy, as the pair shared a special connection. That stemmed from the fact that both Joan and Judy had a background working in vaudeville as children. Judy retained a good deal of trauma from her childhood years, and Joan's shared background helped her relate to Judy and calm her down. It's been said that Judy would call up Joan whenever she was having a meltdown about her past. Joan also formed a close and personal relationship with Clark Gable. It's even been said Clark became so taken with Joan he proposed to her, but Joan turned him down. They appeared together in the film Adventure, released in 1945. It was notable for being Clark's first big role after his return from World War II. Though Joan appeared in the picture, she was not the female lead. That role went to Greer Garson. Joan also got the chance to work with big names like Humphrey Bogart and Bing Crosby, though the late actress claimed she found both of these figures not to be very friendly. Whereas many of Joan's big-name friends were given the opportunity to retire and relax during their later years, Joan had to work herself to death due to her deaths. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Joan Blondell? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content. By the way, if you haven't joined Facts First as a member yet, be sure to look below this video and click the Join button. By becoming a paid member of Facts First, you'll get access to exclusive video content that you won't find anywhere else. This includes some of our more mature content that isn't suitable for public audiences, which includes topics like Hollywood actresses who posed for Playboy and some of the steamiest moments in movie history. Plus, you can enjoy these videos completely ad-free. Our biggest fans will notice they also get badges next to their name when they leave comments on our videos. We pay special attention to comments from our members and so do other viewers. So if you want exclusive content from Factsverse or inside access to discussions with other community members, click the join button to get started for just $4.99. There are hours of members-only videos waiting for you, with new videos added every month. And we're actively working on bringing even more features to help fans like you connect with other members and get more of your favorite content. Just click join, and we'll see you inside the membership tab.